Hey everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Owen Fox and today I want to talk about the quotation from Thich Nhat Hanh which is you must love in a way where the other person feels free. So this love helps people feel free instead of bonded, bound up, um, controlled, pressurized or demanded upon. So in many relationships people feel demanded, told what to do, they feel upset because they think or sense a sense of disrespect or controlling basically. So I just want to say there's two types of relationships if you want to put it simply. There's immature or mature, there's unconscious and there's conscious. There's relationships where most men and people, like most men in the world are not men, they're just little boys. They want what they want, when they want it, how they want it, and basically, like I said, when they want it. They want, they want what they want, when they want it. And often they're manipulative, lying, deceitful, selfish, and they use, manipulate, or lie to women to get what they want. And usually, of course, it's sexual, related, sex, etc. So women have to be especially on the lookout based on the man's instinctive drive to procreate and have sex with different women and their yang go forward energy of like the, like the predator or like the person who chases. Um, so women need to be on their lookout and to be able to spot deception and red flags and these type of things, okay? Because often a man can be like wooing and, um, you know, telling you nice things. So I want to share with you another quotation is, look at what a person set does, not what they say. And um, somebody can tell you all the nice things in the world, but if their behavior don't match up to what they're saying that's obviously a very huge red flag and it's um if it's blatant and it's obvious and there's no unequivocal doubts then we should pay attention and take appropriate response to this type of behavior and um, we don't want to be tricked or used but in a general relationship obviously this can apply to men men or women but it's t stereotypically far more likely to be with men who are like much more likely to be dangerous or prowlers and that type of thing okay Women seem to be much more generally committed and um, faithful overall. Of course, there's many, many, many exceptions. So I do, I do coaching on, on spiritual life coaching, and this is one of the themes that I do notice in my work as well with people. Just obviously, relationships are very emotional things. We get connected, we get attached, we have hopes and dreams. And it's a very emotional experience, so we need to be careful of who we put up at the top of the pyramid as our number one, um, our, our life partner. Because the pinnacle of the pyramid right up here, it's the top and everybody else underneath. You know, we, should, we shouldn't just designate the number one spot to anybody, and that's what most people do. Just get in a relationship with anybody. No like proper screening, no proper idea of what we want or need in a relationship, of um, compatibility, of um, their virtues their integrity, their honor, their nobility. And that is if you actually want a thriving, happy relationship um, or a long-term, happy, thriving relationship. It's different if you just want casual sex, um, which many people do, um, then it doesn't really matter who you want to get with for many people. Although I have to say it is actually very important because when we have sex with somebody, um, we share a great amount of like wound, like energy and wounds, baggage, mental and emotional debris and energy with people. So it is actually very important to consider that and um, consider consider to be sacred. In my opinion, like sex and genitals of the male or the female is a very sacred, special, personal thing. Um, in my opinion, it's best to share with special people and but each to their own and we all are of different levels and different parts of our journey but to love in a way where the other person feels free is to donate stopping to, to be conscious to be mature to be grown up to be a man or a woman rather than a little boy or like an immature girl um, people f are allowed to fly but they'll come back and it's not about we don't care what they do in a conscious relationship people will be feel free but they'll have respect and honor and integrity and truthfulness they won't just be cheating and doing all this sort of stuff that's destructive to themselves going off taking drugs sleeping out you never you never, never know when they're going to come back again you don't hear from them on the text message or phone or anything um so 
it's not about just like, I don't care, do whatever you want. It's about, I trust you. We have a bond. We have a line of communication and intimacy. We have connection and I trust you. It's about trust and intimacy. So people can go off, but we trust them and then we know that they're going to come back and ideally there will be a certain amount of connection and which can vary from person to person, circumstance to circumstance. You know, some people are in, in sick. Many of us, of course, many of us, me too, depending on where we are, we have different like levels and amounts of insecurity or fear, um, anxiety, apprehension, worry, concern, trust issues, relate, like, you know, some people can be needy and um, have heavy emotional responses. We can get triggered. Old wounds and traumas can get stirred up. And that's when we over-exaggerate things, like we have a, what, what you could call rationally, a blown up or over-exaggerated response to something. But this is nothing to be, this is something to be honoured and taken faithfully in your heart towards you or your partner who has this response. And in a conscious relationship, what you want is people to own their triggers and not to blame it on somebody else. You're doing something wrong, you're upsetting me. You say, I feel upset and triggered and this is... This is related to something like, for example, this in my past. And we need to honor and pay attention and work with our triggers and our emotions and honor our emotions and allow our emotions to be felt, not denied, not, not like, not suppressed. It's to be fully felt like you open a tap and then the emotion is allowed to flow, the energy is allowed to flow. So no spiritual teachings which try and suggest denial or repression or suppression and not the unconscious immature like you're doing this to me you know and we need to have mutual understanding and respect and um, work out a middle ground to work with the trigger and the very sensitive emotion so um, for example if someone is like friendly outgoing personality and they might say hi love or hi darling um, if if the person they're with, it could be a man or a woman, like it could be either person. If they come from a past of, let's say, being wounded or tra ups, hurt or traumatized by in relationships regarding trust and faithful faithfulness, etc., this this type of like openness could um, trigger up sensitivities in the heart that haven't been healed and trust issues. So this, you shouldn't, the person who's more outgoing generally with like overall unconditional love or expression of care, they might need to pull back a bit to honor and respect a temporary place where the partner is currently healing in and help the two of them work at the healing and the two of them work at the compromise. So you try and, you try and unobstruct or allow the wound to be um, let go, to be removed and then it won't be such a sensitive issue and we work at understanding each other but it's very respectful so um, so I hope that explains the love in a way where the other person feels free um, when you try and control somebody they'll just rebel or feel miserable they can't give you if they if somebody feels pressurized or demanded upon big um, relationship problems will happen there won't be fulfillment love and connection and sometimes if you feel demanded or pressurized, it can close down your own heart because you feel someone's being very selfish and unintegral. Um, and then it can stop you from being loving and affectionate and open in your heart yourself. So we have to make sure what's the truth because sometimes you might think someone's being demanding and um, controlling or selfish. And actually it could be actually more like our oversensitivity from a previous wound. So we have to be very, very, very self-honest, which is true spirituality, self-honesty which then goes forward into being honest with other people. So it's about being able to say, yes, it's basically my issue, but it could be partially someone else's issue if they're being like overly over the top, oh, I love you. You know, you don't want to be flirtatious or sleazy with anybody, but you know, usually it's clear to understand if you ask yourself honestly, am I being unintegral, sleazy or flirtatious? Or is this other person? But you ask yourself, so if you are, you need to stop, and if you aren't, then the other person who thinks you are needs to be willing to listen and be say to be willing to listen that you're not actually this way, but it's more like their interpretation. So self-honesty and willingness to listen and to be open to being right, to being right or wrong, 
and just being gentle and the most important thing is to be compassionate and kind and how we do we, we respond to people's emotions it's not about like trying to fight or be right we need to listen and be open to the truth but primarily emotionally we need to be compassionate and um, kind to each other so that's how you uh, work with things a sensitive heart will always win the day and help everyone to communicate I know it can be frustrating sometimes but yeah um, so that's self-healing is the most important thing in life and working through our issues we can either do it alone if we want to or we can do it with our partner um, so yeah um, for a relationship to work both people need to be willing to do inner work and to be inner honest and to be honest with each other and to communicate and keep the lines of understanding through communication open and the lines of intimacy open through sharing and being open in our communication so we need to have that connection in the middle where we're sharing and being honest and open um, we need to tr trust each other instead of hiding in things and assuming things or internalizing things and letting things fester and grow and become more of a big gremlin you know you need to share and to be be courageous enough to be vulnerable being vulnerable is the most important thing through communication and uh, not to be afraid to appear weak um, not to be afraid to appear weak wounded or have a problem because we all have our, our wounds and areas in which we're growing and healing from we've all had different pasts it's very important to try and understand people because a man's perspective could be so different to a woman's perspective or even two men or two women or you know we can we have different pasts we see life slightly or very differently we need to be open to empathizing and stepping in someone else's shoes and really 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 caring for their emotional state of being a tender sensitive loving heart we don't want to put up a loads of crap either sometimes you need to know when to like leave a relationship if someone's not willing to help or do their part you know that's self-love and self-nurture some some people are more, we're all on different levels of like being conscious some days we ourselves are more conscious than other days love and compassion and understanding you know forgiveness and people need to be making forward steps to write the past learn from the past and to go forward otherwise relationships don't work so you, you can't have a dead relationship or dead connection and um, it takes ten, attending to a relationship and some people don't want to tend to a relationship they're either too tired, stressed, or unmotivated. Like tired, stressed, distracted in life, or they mightn't be passionate enough. They mightn't have strong enough desire. So it's a very multifaceted subject, as you can see, a huge of different elements. So my intention for making this video is that it might help you in your life and your relationship, because at the end of the day, I feel and believe we're all as spirits on a physical journey here. We're multi-dimensional beings, and. I've had a very sad and suffering, lonely and traumatic life, but thank God I've done a huge amount of healing and it seems I'm very largely unblocked. Um, energy healers have said to me lately, got fantastic reading, feedback, but obviously I have areas to improve and heal from and to grow in and expand in. It's a never ending journey, but inner work, my point is inner work is worth it. Your life becomes better. Um, and I hope sincerely that this video helps you and I send you love and gratitude for watching and appreciating. I'd love it if you were willing to share or leave a comment or to give it a like to support its popularity so other people can see it in the YouTube and then they might be helped and like passing it on. So thanks for helping, thanks for your, contribute, contribute, your contribution and I'll see you again in the video. And just please feel welcome to subscribe if you're new or look at my links below. I work spiritual life coaching and I have a herb shop which helps our body, mind, spirit. Um, Chinese hair, just herbs, superfoods and enzymes which are really, really, really helpful. Get a lot of positive feedback. You can see my coaching and testimonials on my website too. So anyone who wants to connect or collaborate, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, otherwise I'll see you on the internet if you want to befriend me on Facebook, etc. And uh, thanks again. So thanks again for your time and lots of love. Bye.